Hello my 3D printing friends. Today we're going to check out Magiku. I'm looking over here so I can see what's behind me. <laughs> uh, we won this on 3D Printing Nerds uh, annual charity giveaway stream. Uh, thank you very much, Joel. Uh, it's a lot of fun. If y'all have not been a part of that stream, you should check it out. Uh, the, he gave away, I believe it was $100,000 in product and we raised over 50000 for a children's hospital charity. He does it every year. I highly recommend you get on that stream. Don't miss it. It's, it's really a good one. Everybody is there. Great guy. Great purpose of the stream. Helps everyone. So let's get to it real quick. All right. <clears throat> here is the box. And here is the printer that we're going to try this on. This is our belted Ender Z, uh, Ender 3 Pro. Has the glass bed that is. Very slightly textured. Um, as you can see, I, as like everybody, I have problems with this bed. Uh, I eventually will get replaced with a flex plate, but uh, this is how it came, and I've just left it. And I thought, you know, it might be handy to be able to print some smooth stuff once in a while. As much as we all love our uh, PEI whoop, flex plates, um, yeah, sometimes you want something smooth. I know every every few months we get a new product. Uh, the latest one are those holographic stickers. Um, I don't remember what those were made out of because I don't have one yet. This is a generic Amazon, $20 at the time, cheaper now. I've had hit or miss with these. Uh, I've had two that were absolutely just perfect. Everything sticks absolutely perfect. Uh, I had one that I really had to get in there and scrub it down with dish soap and a pretty rough uh, scrub pad, give it a little bit, little bit more texture, but uh, works pretty good. I do put every once in a while just a little bit of glue stick on there, just as a safety, just a very thin layer, uh, which is also kind of difficult with this because it just kind of goops up in spots. Um, if you can and you are using glue stick, don't get the small ones. Get the big mega ones because they just they cover better and it's more even. And, uh, yeah, it just feels better in your hand. So, all right. So, that's what we normally print on. Let's set that over there so we don't lose it. This is the one that we're going to print on. As you can see, it has a bunch of glue all on it. I'm going to go ahead and wet this real quick. You can see this is the color-changing glue stick. We'll let this set a second. <laughs> that is hard. That is absolutely hard. So we're just going to leave that on there, keep it kind of moist for a moment, slide it out of the way, and then we'll get back to the magic group. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, first, the box, it just says Magigoo 3D Printing Adhesive. If you're not familiar with it, this is a uh, printing adhesive for making sure your first layer sticks. Uh, I have something I've had problems with that we're going to test. Uh, it is going to be printed in PETG, uh, which is usually a little harder than PLA to, to make stick. Um, pretty generic, not generic, but just a simple box, which I appreciate. Uh, on the top, just has their logo. The bottom, just says Magigoo.com, M-A-G-I-G-O-O.com. All right. On the back, we have store this side up like that. Magigoo 3D printing pin. Adhesive for use in 3D printing applications to stick first layer of filament to heated 3D printing bed. Package contains one Magigoo pin, 120 milliliters, four fluid ounces. Instructions produced and packaged <clears throat> by Thought 3D Limited. Uh, unit 2150 KVIC Cardin Industrial Estate, PLA 3000, Eola, Malta, European Union, www.magigoo.com. Store this side down. And a barcode. What I really like about this barcode, you can see there's a, either it's a 3D print nozzle or a marker making this, this bar down here. That's pretty original. I like the fact that they took the time to do that instead of just barcode. So let's get into it, see what is in the package. Open her up. All right. Oh, there is the Magigoo. Wow, that is, 
That's big. All right. We have, oh, instructions. Now we have a cardboard cut out. Let's see. Close the box up. Leave it over here. All right. What does this one say? Swift, an effective application for large build areas, 3D printing farms. Oh, this is for the Magigoo Coater, which is a very long roller you can put on here. Get your 15% discount. Use code in our shop. It also has a QR code where you can scan it. It is magigoo.myshopify.com. On the back, it says pump, swipe, then wipe. Starter kit includes the applicator, cleaning kit, Magigoo, original 250 milliliters. We will look at that. So there is the big wide applicator. So you pump, you swipe, and you wipe. Okay, there is the front. You can see it works on, looks like all their bottles. So you don't have to stick with just the original. So let's set that up there. Let's see what the instructions say. Instructions at Magigoo. Okay. First time looking at this. How does Magigoo work? Magigoo works with ABS, PLA, PETG, and HIPS. The adhesive makes sure prints stick firmly when the print bed is hot and then releases as soon as it cools down. This unique and innovative mechanism means that no tools are needed to remove the prints from the bed. They just pop off when the bed cools down. I wish I had this years ago because on one of my previous printers before uh, I had a flex plate, uh, I woke up one morning after a print finished and I had to use the good old spatula, which I don't know where it has gone now, thank goodness, uh, the metal one. And uh, as I am trying to remove the print from the print bed, I said to myself, we're going to stab ourselves. And sure enough, I went right across, all the way diagonally, right in the palm of my hand right there. You probably can't see it, but I have a little cut right there that was down to the flesh. Hadn't even had my morning coffee. Uh, luckily, I'm only a block from a hospital. <laughs> but... Uh, didn't do it. Put some super glue on it and a rag and a little bit of a scar there, but, you know, learning experience. Although, I believe that cut into my lifeline, so maybe my lifeline will fork it someplace. I don't know. I don't know about that. Whatever that line is. Maybe it's love life. Somebody tell me. If you know, let me know. Am I going to die? Yeah. Uh, how to apply. Shake the magic goo pen like you mean it. I like that. <laughs> Shake it like a man. Shake it like it owes you money. Uh, press the nib end of your pen on the printing bed for Magigoo to flow. Spread the adhesive evenly on the printing area. Cover your bed with an even thin layer. Make sure that no spots are missed. It's best to apply Magigoo when the printing bed is still cold, but it will also work when the printing bed is already hot. Which, if anyone's used glue stick, you know that just melts the glue and you get a big old glob in one spot. Make sure to use Magigoo with the suggested plastics and with correctly leveled bed and suitable printing settings. See our recommended settings below. Oh, and they have a little chart. Squeeze the bottle gently only when the nub is pressed against the bed. Keep the nub or the nib away from dirt. How to store. Magigoo is best stored upright. This position, not this position. Oh, it's a cat. Tough. Uh, I don't know. Uh, with the cap closed and always from direct sunlight. Okay, keep it away from sunlight. Magigoo was specifically designed for mobility, which is good news if you want to take it with you on the go. I regularly pack up this printer and put it in my backpack. I am kidding. But I have taken one on a train before. Actually, uh, no, not this one, but another Ender 3. I did go and buy it and disassembled it in the parking lot, threw it in the backpack, and brought it home in the train. Uh, there's how to store. Recommended print settings. Magigoo has been designed to test and tested to work with common plastics. As the composition of each plastic is a little different, the idea ideal settings for Magigoo may vary. Here are the recommended temperature ranges for effective application. Bed temperature PLA 40 to 60 degrees, ABS 90 to 110 degrees, PETG 60 to 85 degrees, HIPS 90 to 110 degrees on Celsius with a little asterisk. 
may vary for different printers and filament breads. As always. As always. Cleaning. After your print has finished and popped off, clean the cool printing bed by wiping it with just a damp cloth. Use just water. So cleans up just as easy as glue stick. That's very nice. What to do if you love the result? If you like Magigoo, then help us spread the magic. Share your love online, on blogs, Twitter, Facebook, Insta Instagram. Just don't forget to tag us at Magigoo. We're also ha happy if you just tell your friends. Either way, we're waiting for your feedback. What? No, no YouTube? Did I, did I screw up? Okay. Uh, where to send feedback or concerns? We want to learn more about your experiences. We're here for good and bad. Get in touch by email, emailing us at feedback at magigoo.com. Let's improve Magigoo together. Uh, magigoo.com. And then we have a Twitter logo, a YouTube logo, Facebook, and an Instagram. Let's see what's on this side. Nothing much. We're going to close this up. Stick all this back in the box because we're going to hold on to it. Sure do like winning free stuff. I hadn't won anything in a while. It seems uh, you go through streaks. You will not win anything on any of the giveaways on streams for months. And then in a couple days you'll win two or three times. I don't know why, but it just seems to happen. Let's open the bag. Oh, it's not as, uh, it, it will kind of stand up, but it was more pointy. All right, where's the front? There we go. Magigoo. 3D printing adhesive. Has the directions for use on it. Shake, press, apply, and print. For use in 3D printing applications, be used for fused filament fabrication 3D printers with heated beds only. Specifically designed for use with polylactic acid, PLA. And aqua nitrate. Gosh, I, my eyes are so bad. There's so much like eutadine, styrene, ABS. Gosh, it just said ABS. Filaments. Recommended bed settings. PLA 40 to 60 degrees. ABS 90 to 110. As you can tell, I don't read so good. There's the barcode again. With the fancy little applicator. Oh, maybe it's their applicator. That's what it is. Uh, Magigoo.com, warning, choking hazard, small parts, not intended for children under 14 years of age, do not swallow, safe for intended use, store bottle in an upright position with the cap firmly on, away from heat and direct sunlight. 2020, Thought 3D Limited, all rights reserved. Magigoo is a trademark of Thought 3D Limited, Thought 3D, and then the whole address I gave you earlier. 75% natural ingredients, biocide free, solvent free, Solvent free, including water. There's the Thought 3D logo, and that's it. 120 milliliter, milliliters, four fluid ounces, made in Malta. I missed that before. So there's a close up of the bottle. It's a pretty bottle. So let's get over to it real quick. Actually, let's uh, check their website real quick, give you some more of the details. Okay, let's go over to our browser. Here we go. Uh, fortunately, let me bring it up for me so I can actually see it. Here is their website. There's that large applicator. There's all the variations that they have. It's easy release mechanism. It's also non-toxic and odorless. Ah, should have mentioned odorless on the bottom. Forget those stinky glue smells. Easy application. Long lasting, a hundred average prints. Okay, that should have been on the bottle as well, because I, I had the feeling you put it on, you wipe it off, and then you're going to reapply it every time. Uh, but if it lasts a hundred plus average prints, that's a real big plus, especially on this class bed. Non toxic, easy release, multi material. And I can buy it there. Here are all the different versions. They have a Pro HT, a Pro Flex, a Pro PA. Oh, Pro HT is high temperature, obviously. Flex is for flexibles. PA for nylon. Pro PC for polycarbonate filaments. Pro PD for polypropylene filaments. And Pro PPGF for glass fiber polypropylene filaments. 
more information. There is their Magigoo Coater. Little stand, I like that. 20 centimeters wide, 250 milliliter larger bottle, easy clean, multi-material, no clogging, thin coat. I, I like that. Ah, this is an inline dryer. Interesting. An inline design dries only the section of filament that is 3D printed. Uh, I would like to try this. Uh, unfortunately, where my filament breaks when it's wet, at least the PLA, is usually further back. Um, so it usually breaks higher up in the spool. Uh, upgradable? That's nice. Intelligent? Has smart sensors, user-friendly, and guides you, and it is safe. Movement sensors detect idle, movement, and switch off the heaters to ensure safety. Ah, okay. Well, obviously, it has little heaters. There are some links here at the bottom. You can sign up for their newsletter. While we're here, let's look at a couple of their other things. This is the original that we got. Pretty much the same text. Yeah. Regardless of you being a hobbyist or professional, it is extremely rewarding to have a 30-hour print complete without any warping and having it released easily once cooled. Yeah, that is one thing. Just when you cannot get a print off and you're nearly going to break it trying to get it off, it's just, especially if it's a long overnight print, it's just soul-crushing. No additional tools. They also have a little YouTube video here that you can click on that shows you the application. Okay, let's go over here. They have a manual. I have not perused yet because I wanted to try this pretty much how anybody would. How many pages is it? It's a lot of pages. 115. Wow. Well, I think this is a catalog and manual. Let's see. Don't panic. Ah, I knew I liked these guys. Time isn't a losing. Lunchtime, doubly so. Ah, there it is. Table of contents. Ooh, talks about build plate damage, what causes it, how to prevent on a glass. Ton of facts. Wow, there is so much information here. Composites, mechanical properties, conductive filament, magnetic filament, metal filament. Wow. Ton of information that I think applies just in general to 3D printing. Moisture in 3D printing, methods of drying. Yeah, here's the Magigoo. It's more of the Magigoo. Yes, so this is a manual and catalog. Not, not a bad idea to combine the two. Wow, that big fat roller does look fun. Okay, there's using the single stick. I can click on stuff. Okay, talking about some warping. Wow. Wow, they're getting into really some of the science, controlling the warp. Wow, that is a pretty extensive manual slash catalog. A lot of tips, going over temp on the heat bed, using a brim, ton of excellent information here. I haven't read any of this to verify if it's correct, but I get the feeling just by looking at it, it is. I mean, look, there's an example of too high, perfect, and too low on the same print. Yeah, there we go. There's the dangerous spatula that attacked me. Oh, scarred. It was uh, right during COVID as well. And I had COVID at the time. Let's see. Wow. How to use it. So much information. We're only on page 55. Wow. This is a lot. I did not expect this much information. Um from a product that's just for sticking stuff to the bed. This is way more than I ever expected. This says they've done a lot of research. They spent a lot of time making this. Got 115 pages. 
this is the kind of information I wish I had had when I first started. Because, uh, it was failure after failure after failure. Especially with the first layer. Of course, when I started, we did not even have flexible build plates. We didn't even have the rubberized uh, build tack style. It was uh, painter's tape. Okay. Ronald Reagan. Wow. It's covering so many types of filament. That is very, very impressive. That is very impressive. Man. Trying to get to the end. Oh, there is their filament dryer. Oh, it's it's big. I thought it was like the size of this bottle. Slightly bigger, but no, it's big. Okay. Alright. Last page. That is a bunch. They also have on their website this help section. All kinds of topics. What is it? How does it work? Where to buy it? How to store it? How long will it last? How to apply? What to do if I like it? What do I do? Spread the word! How do you clean? Wipe it off with a damp cloth. Okay. Oh, they also have this handy table on their website. Uh, it shows you the printer, the manufacturer, the material, the nozzle size, initial layer bed temp, uh, default bed temp, whether it had a brim, wide initial nozzle temp. Wow. Bunch of manufacturers. Let's. There we go. DuPont, Eastman, Esun, Fiberology, Fiber 3, Fiber Force, Filament PM, Form Futra, I guess. Kimya. Well, I haven't even heard of some of these. Matter Hackers. Owens Corning. I did not know when Owens Corning was into the game. Perlon. Polymaker. Look at look at all the polymakers. Yeah. We all know how much we love polymaker. More polymakers. Smart materials. Solvay. Tallman 3D. Okay. This is the nylon. I have not used that. Where is the PA? Huh. Did not try with the Tallman PETG. That's the only one I've really used. All right. Okay. Back to the additional website. Okay. Go ahead. Bring this up. We'll come back over here. All right. Let's clean this off. We'll, uh, we'll apply it. Oh, and I stuck everything. I stuck this to it. I didn't have to. Get extra water. This has so much glue stick on it. Look how look how thick that is. That's how thick I was having to put glue stick on this glass bed to make it work. Man, that is a ton. I don't think I've ever had to put it that thick. Yep, we're gonna need more water. Find another paper towel. There's so much glue stick. Get up the majority of it. Let's get it dissolved. I want to make sure there's absolutely none on here. To skew the results. Unfortunately, oh, you can't see it. I have a, right here is a webcam mounted on this camera, but that cable would not reach the 3D printer on the table. All right, we're going to go get another paper towel, wet it down. We'll be right back. Okay, back and wet. Oh, this is a lot of water. So much glue stick. I almost should have cleaned this before recording this, but I really wanted to show how much glue stick had to use on this glass plate to just make things simple to stick. So far this has really been a project printer to experiment with. I have not really moved it into production, but you know, some nights I do. Okay. Set that there, get our desk all wet. 
And this right here is what I used to go through um, every single time I printed when they first discovered glue stick or hairspray or any of those worked. Oh, so much. Need another paper towel. Throw this one away. What we're going to do, grab one of these lint-free cloths. They don't absorb water very well, but... There go. right in there this this heat bed had some real hard love even when I got it actually this printer is one the person I bought it from never got it to work they had bought it from somewhere you can see they just drilled down into this glass glass plate all the way here at the end all right Feeling any? Let's get rid of that wet mess. Wipe it up again. Clean this guy off. Okay. Yeah, because water and electricity. Not a great idea. Uh, let's go ahead and warm this guy up just a bit. Take it up to like 38 degrees. Just dry this guy out. Yeah, it doesn't feel sticky at all. Still a little bit of water stuck in those grooves. Yeah, feeling good. We're already up to 29, 30. I don't want to get it all the way hot. I just want to uh, dry it out a little. While that's going on, we're going to shake it like we mean it. Shake it like it owes me money. Go ahead and get rid of that. I don't think we're going to be putting it in the bag. Yeah, you can see it inside. Plenty of bubbles. Doesn't look like it separates in any way, shape, or form. But uh, yeah, I don't. I don't see two layers of chemical. So it's a good sign. All right, we're up to 38 degrees, just barely warm, just enough to feel. Crunchy stuff. There we go. Yeah, that feels good. All right, let's open her up. Oh, it has a foam applicator tip. Very soft foam. It, uh... It very much reminds me of the protective foam that is on a Shure 58 microphone. If you've ever opened up one of those microphones, it's a standard one people use on stage. There's a little bit of foam in there to uh, slot, uh, cut down on the semblance and plosives. Plosive. Semblance is words with the S's. Uh, so yeah, that usually cleans up your vocals a little bit. That is very much like it. Feels very much like it too. So we're not going to do the whole bed because we're going to do a small part. Oh, I just felt it push in. Okay, so there's a little, ah, yeah, there's a little plunger inside that opens up. I like that. It's a cool feature. As you can see, it's even small places. Now let's spread it out. Oh, that goes on way better than glue stick. Okay, I'm not going to print something that big. I'm just going to take it off, close it up, stick it up here. See how long it takes to dry. I do see some little kind of ridgy spots, but pretty much nothing like we've had uh, with glue stick. Okay, we're going to let this guy down a little bit, make it print. 
Uh, let's again. Let's go over to the side camera. Uh, this is a Ender 3 Pro uh, glass bed. It's been modified to run uh, Kevin, aka Sam's belted Z. So there is no no rod. We were using the boop, belted Z. God, gotta fix this mount. Uh, this is currently this is King Loot PETG. Nozzle temp 230-250, bed temp 80-90, to 90, print speed 30-60, to 60, fan on. Well, that's new. As you can see, I printed quite a bit with this stuff. Bought this on a lark. Really good. Uh, the hot end is a dual metal, bimetal. Hot end. Although... Looking down in there, and I am seeing a large amount of leakage. But we're going to roll with it. I say, let's try it. Let's see if this fails. If anything fails, it will be the printer. I don't think it's the magic here. Wow, that is... Let's switch back so you can see this. Just a few seconds. It's, it's pretty much completely dry. It's very slightly tacky. Very slightly. Very slightly. Okay, let's go back over. To our browser and we're going to fire this guy off which is a axle holder for these guys as you can see here's the last thing i printed in that petg rather quickly uh, but the axles kept failing kept ah, falling off getting caught all kinds of problems so let's start this and see what happens we're probably going to uh pause this because this is going to be a long print First, let's make sure it homes and I don't make a liar out of myself. And it will start. Yeah, I recently had to swap a nozzle on this guy. Looks like he's leaking a little. We do have a BMG style uh, extruder, dual gear extruder on the back. Quite honestly, the, so far the only thing I've printed with it or attempted to was his actual axles, and uh, I haven't seen much of a difference. Don't know. Okay. Our bed is at 80. Well, it's set for 80, extruder for 120. It is heating up quite nicely, as you can see there. Nozzle is at 120. Heat bed is at 55, slowly creeping up to 80. It's 56. Actually, not that y'all can see this, we'll go back to the main screen. There we go. Sixty degrees. Definitely have some leakage on the heat break. That is a shame. That was a pain. Oh. It is a wise investment to spend the extra money and get uh, all your hot ends using the exact same type of nozzle. Uh, these generic dual metal or bimetal hot ends uh, came with a 
funky nozzle. And uh, I used it till I couldn't use it no more. And then I had to swap to standard style that's on all the other printers. And then, of course, then that we had to readjust our Z offset because they're all a little different. That's something no one ever tells you. All the nozzles are different. You just can't buy some and think they're going to work. You will have to readjust your Z. Z offset. Okay. We're at 70 degrees going up to 80. As soon as we hit 80, that hot end will warm up. Start printing. Fans kicking on for the power supply. And this printer currently... Yeah, we don't have the, the uh, pre-print G-code macros set up on this one to uh, do a bed mesh. So, we'll see what happens. I don't think we do. We might. I don't know. It's been a while since I printed with it. Exciting. 75 of 80. Taking it a while, 76. It is about 74, 75 degrees in here right now. We're being 20 degrees outside. Seventy eight, seventy nine. There we go. Nozzle is going to heat up to two hundred and thirty. Should go much faster, always does. can actually here for now still can't see that because the lights get this one camera a little closer there we go it's a little better a little mo better just hitting 190 200. Two hundred, two ten, two twenty. Any second, any second, anticipation. Two twenty eight, boom, two twenty nine. 230. 230 hot in, 80 degree bed. Get it started printing. Filament flowing. Oh, did not stick over here. We had no magic here. Look at that. Did not stick at all. But I can already tell you, it, it's sticking. It is sticking. Also tell our Z is just a hair close. All right, this has a skirt with no brim. I couldn't remember because I actually uh, was trying to print these on two different printers to speed up the process. And they get about 80% through and then they would uh, fall over. Like four or five times in a row. So then I added a brim to one. Get 
interesting. Got another outside skirt. I believe this was sliced at 100 millimeters a second. A little fast for PETG, but should have been part of my problem. Well, at least for this PETG. Interesting. I need to check uh, my slicer profile because it has done like three layers on that skirt. It is already to doing an infill pattern. Flipperized, of course, as y'all saw from the previous screen. And I have not tuned for this BMG style extruder, so it feels like there's a lot of, it feels and it sounds like there's a lot of retract going on. We will see if we get any clogging. going okay i'm going to mute the mic and we're just going to let this roll this is going to be a uh, pretty long print uh, what we'll do is uh post-production we will go ahead and speed this section up so it goes pretty dang quick because i don't expect anybody to sit here and watch this print for two hours i think about what's the estimate let's go back over to the browser Estimation is an hour. Slicer said 114. Clipper says 107. Yeah. We'll just let it go. We'll see what happens. Let's go back to large camera. All right. We'll be back with you in a bit. See what happens. Hopefully it doesn't fail. Hopefully it's not the printer's fault. But I can already tell you, it's sticking. It's sticking well. All right, be right back.
we almost had a bit of catastrophe there. Wow. That's all I can say. Wow. Um, yeah. This stuff works. Let's let it cool down. See if it pops off. Let's see how hard it is right now. Wow, that is solid. Ooh, we're still at 76 degrees. And that is just solid. That is solid. I, I tried repeatedly. Probably four times to get one of these to print. Um, without falling off with glue stick. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. I am impressed. Uh, hopefully this will cool down pretty quick. Boy, that light has a lot of glare. Oh, boy, let's turn it back off now that we're done with the print. Oh. Whew. That little light is bright. I, I am thoroughly impressed. I am very thoroughly impressed. Um, honestly. Uh, b up until now, I 100% I thought I did not need this product. I really thought, hey, I got glue stick. It works fine. It's easy to clean up. Um, it's cheap. But... Yeah. Considering for this, no brim, just a skirt, uh, PETG, I, I could not get this to print successfully. Uh, on this printer, or my other one with the uh, uh, PEI flex plate. I had a problem on that one too. Even tried a bunch of glue stick trying to get it to stick. Could not get it to, to complete. It would always get to right about in here, maybe here if I got lucky. And then just lose it, fall apart. I am seriously impressed. Um, I'm kind of upset at myself uh, because previously I had some prints that I had tried to do that uh, even down to like, I think it was like 10 millimeters a second, uh, I could not get them to stick. They were very tall and thin, like yay tall, like almost a foot tall. Very thin. It was, a, it was a rose stuff, basically. The 3D printed roses. And I, I wasted so much filament trying to get those just to work. It, they would just pop right off. Uh, I am highly impressed. I'm still at 67 degrees. Ooh, that's warm. Still. And still, it's on there solid. That That is so solid. I can still, let's go over to the desk cam. And you can see when we applied it, you can still see it. Whoa, it's, it's even tackier. Yeah, it gets tackier when it's warm. Wow. And it, it doesn't come off on your fingers. I mean, I can feel a, just a little, but uh, yeah. Don't feel it at all now. Nothing in my hands, nothing up my sleeves. Very, very impressed. I am very impressed with the Magigoo. Uh, once again, thank you very much, Joel. Um, and Magigoo for donating it to his stream. It, it, this stuff works amazing. Works amazing. Definitely worth the money. Definitely worth the money. Just the amount of failed prints this is going to save you. Uh, time and frustration. I'm I'm flabbergasted. I'm really impressed. I'm really, really, really impressed. And this printer, I guess I just recently swapped the nozzle and had to reset the Z offset. It's close. It's not exact. Um, that... That's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Now, since the retraction has not been tuned for this printer or this filament, uh, we will see if we can get, we have a couple support structures in here in the end of these axles where it sits. 
right in this little little cutout to hold my solder. So I was getting tired of it all being like this and having to pick it up and then dropping the, all of them because there's these come in like a six pack of different sizes. It's been bothering me for months, for months. And uh, yeah, I am seriously impressed. Seriously impressed. Okay, we're at 60 degrees. Still just solid. I'm I am putting look look let me go back to the side camera so you can see the bed flexing. You see just a little bit of that bed flexing back and forth, and this thing is just solid. I want to just snap it off, but no, we're gonna let this cool down all the way and uh see if it just does pop right off. It is it is magic. And it is goo. Very impressed. Very impressed. Man, great product. Really great product. Stick it there. Get that in camera shot. Oh, we're down at 57. Still. Absolutely solid. Absolutely solid. I really want to take the skirt off, but we're going to wait. And and as demonstrated earlier, um, the adhesion on glass beds, and this is a textured glass bed at that, which is not supposed to have issues. Uh, the prime line did not even stick. Did not even stick. Now, we did not do a bed mesh, so possibly this side's a little low. Could be. Who knows? But, yeah, that, that is thoroughly impressive. And the fact that it lasts multiple prints, uh, the fact that there is no, like, buildup like you get with glue stick, seriously impressed. 55 degrees, still solid. Still solid. Wish I had a little fan in here to cool this thing off. Be the longest part of this video. Let's go over to browser so y'all can actually see the temp while we're waiting. So impressed. I'm gonna try and blow on it a little. I will say that is probably the only advantage to the the glass plate. It it does retain heat. It does retain heat. Fifty three degrees. Still just stuck on. It is just stuck. That's so solid. So solid. I, I'm I am amazed. I am amazed. I am seriously amazed. Magigoo is a quality product. I am amazed and angry at myself for not trying it sooner. We'll see what happens if it, if it truly is this easy release. We're just about to hit 50 degrees. Man, I had so many problems trying to print the simple part. I actually just started a week ago and then just gave up because uh, I couldn't get them to print. I was getting tired of wasting filament on two different printers. We tried to skirt. We tried to brim. We didn't do a raft, but a brim should have held it. Yeah, just had 
problems. And on the other, I believe that was with uh, PLA. Yeah, I, yeah, I switched over to PLA. Solid 50 degrees at this point. I wonder at what temperature it releases. Wow, I bet that is in that manual. I, I would really like to know that. So impressed. Twenty twenty is when they came out with this. Four years. Four years of my life wasted with glue stick and uh all that cleanup. Oh, man. So impressed. Forty nine degrees, still solid. Still solid. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, I popped it loose. Okay. Still, I had to put so much force on that. I'm moving this extremely heavy glass bed back. And, uh, yeah. Bottom looks absolutely great. I can see a little bit of the bed texture in there. Man, that just amazing. Okay, we're going to let this keep going. See if we can pop these supports out because we're here. Hey, out and came out good. Gotta love that. Oh, will the other one come out? Oh, this one's being a little bit of a pain. Breaking off instead of coming out as one nice solid piece. There we go. There we go. There's nothing worse than. When your supports just stick and you got hours of cleanup. Or something like this, which is a, supposed to be a smooth turning axle, that would have been a pain in the butt. There we go. There we go. Wow. That's. Let's try it out. While we're waiting on this to cool down, stick it right through. Oh yeah, I'm happy. That makes that makes my my entire weekend. Oh, I feel so much better. Look at that. Ah. Oh. All right, forty six degrees. Cool enough. We can really get our hand on it now. Still sticky. Still sticking. Yeah, that is, that is just amazing. Forty-five. Man. I am so impressed. Hmm. So impressed. I am really amazed I could slide this bed back and forth that that part. And this is the thinnest coating. Thinnest coating. It is so thin. It's definitely less tacky now. I can feel it when I go straight down. It's just barely tacky. You don't, you don't really feel it at all when you're sliding. 44 degrees. Should be at probably its transition point very soon. Let's try to pick again. Still, just so solidly attached. Man. Well, and I'm kind of surprised the print made it with as much leakage as I'm having around this nozzle. I'm not the clean that up. Thought I got it right the first time. Anything worth doing is worth doing three times. Oh, Magigoo. I am a believer. I am a believer. I really want to see how many prints it lasts. Because uh, that, that's just 
amazing. Oh yeah, if you compare the graphics here, with the graphic here on the barcode, that is definitely this applicator. And they're very nice, very nice. The label is also very high quality. It is a stick-on. I can feel it right there. It's not printed onto the, to the bottle, but it feels really good. Nice and thick, too. I just hope I don't uh, mix this up with my vape fluid. I bet that would be uh, different. We're at 42 degrees, as you can see. Tacky, not tacky. Tacky, not tacky. Tacky, not tacky. Edges are completely cool. Yeah, it's just here in the center. I think it's going to release any moment. I get the feeling right around 40 degrees is when this is going to let loose. It's going to be 42. I'm just doing the lightest of fingernail picking on it. But usually that is enough to pop one of these skirts right off. 41. So am I. I'm flabbergasted. I am literally flabbergasted. You know, if we were smart, which we never claim to be smart, uh, we would have lowered the hot end down and just turned the cooling fan on up to 100. Now well, we're holding at 41 for a while. There we hit 40. Lightest bit of warmth left. Let's go back to the desk cam. All right. Phew. My OCD playing with me. 40 degrees. It's nice and cool in the center. I mean, I'm catching a good solid bit of fingernail on there, and it is still sticking. I'm a believer that this is a product that we are definitely, we're going to be getting more. I wonder how long this will last, 120 milliliters. The fact it says that one application will do a, a 100 plus prints, that's, what are, I didn't even look at what the cost is. Let's, let's look at the cost, see how much it cost. Go back over to the browser. Uh, Go to the page. Over a hundred applications. It was easy. It sure looks easy to clean. Yeah, it did have. You know, I did not smell it. Let's smell it. It has a little bit of a smell, but less than. Less than uh, Elmer's glue. All right. Nicer print finish. It does look like a nicer print finish. I have to say. Get back over here. I've got too much stuff. Uh, it, it. Let's see if I can get this to focus. Look at that. That is probably the nicest finish I've had on this bed. And I'll show you the top to compare it. Looks like a standard top layer. Go, come on, focus. 
Definitely no ironing in there. A little dirty. Little zits you see are... I can't even feel them with my finger. But of course, that's how the cameras work with 3D prints. They always look worse on the camera. But yeah. Let's see if we can get this to focus again. Come on. Come on. Well... This is why we're going to get a manual focus camera. That is, yeah. It's smooth. I do not feel any residue on the print. It's not sticky. Yeah, it's not sticky at all. Wow. Wow. Flabbergasted. Get my elbow in the camera there. Sorry about that. Okay, we're at 37 degrees. Let's go back over to the to the browser. Sorry about that. Buy now. Let's let's see how much it is. Fifteen pounds or seventeen seventy, including VAT. Okay. Let's see, that's directly from them. Let's see, is there a reseller? Check online. Oh, and you can become a reseller. I wonder what the requirements are. Okay, add to cart. Now I wanted to see where one was close to me. All right. Let's do this. Magic goo. Ran away over on Amazon. Let's see if it's on Amazon. Let's see what it is on Amazon. Nineteen ninety-five. That's worth it. That is totally worth it. One hundred percent worth it. I mean, yes, that's more expensive than glue stick, but. Uh, a hundred prints off of a single application and just how well it, it worked a hundred times better than glue stick ha oh, we're down to 36 degrees go back over here that out of there let's try again oh still doesn't want to come up that's impressive Oh, oh, there it goes. Yep, I can see it just barely breaking loose. Came off absolutely perfect. And look at that. Zero residue from the print. Usually with glue stick, you can see the outline of your print down in it. That is just amazing. It's still just... Very slightly tacky. Just the slightest. I'm, yeah. I'm sold. I'm sold. Okay. Yeah, that's Magigoo. I, I'm a believer now. I'm a believer. Uh, I'm going to use the heck out of this stuff. Uh, once again, again, thank you so much, uh, Joel. 3D Printing Nerd and Magigoo for putting it up in his charity stream. Wow. I have to admit, when I won this as of all the prizes, you know, I was like, uh, okay, whatever. What am I going to do with it? But, yeah. This is, this, this is a requirement. This is a requirement. Uh, if you are just now starting 3D printing, or you're still an, you're an experienced 3D printer, get some. Get some, get some, get some. Uh, it'll make your life just so much better. I'm really impressed. Uh, we will try this next on the uh, textured PEI flex plate and see how that goes. I think it's going to work just as good, if not better. Um, and then I'll... I'll put a comment on this video uh, telling how those results worked out. I'm super impressed. Yeah. Magigoo. Get you some. Get you some. It's worth the $20.
the time, the frustration, the cleanup. It's, yeah. Get you some. Magic goo. It's magic. Catch y'all next time.